some enchanted evening You may see a stranger You may see a stranger Across a crowded room And somehow you know You know even then that somehow you'll see her again and again. Sun and champagne. Yeah, all right, down to the sheets. Do you want to go back as well? Yeah. All right. And Joe. Can I? How are you doing? How are you, Joe? You well? Great, how are you? Well, I feel absolutely marvellous now. That's good. Are you worried about speeches? No. I, I worried. My girls told me I could waffle on as much as I like, and that's okay. <laughs> well, that's okay if they can hear the lyrics. Hey, Dad, would you throw these in your
Okay, we're going to have to kneel now, Sharpie. Yeah, turn around, Max. Okay, wait a second. Look at the two faces. Go ahead. I'm well impressed, Pete. I'm well impressed. <laughs> Huh? Are you very casual? You're very casual. That's not it. Okay. Yeah. Is it wine to tell? It's all Marion, 
Maid Marion, a maid need there. Oh, 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 that's. Is she a fine woman? Oh, fine. Get in nice and close there. Oh, that's a beautiful. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're on. You're on. Yeah. When she starts kissing the younger ones, then we get worried. <laughs> oh, no, go on, go on. Come here, Woo! Yes! Oh, look at the camera there. Well, did you have a good day today, Sonny? Good-looking couple here. You there. Susan's over here. Susan. Susan's very shy. Who are we doing there? Say something nice. Right. That's nice. I had enough. Now, what do you have to say? What? Mark? Uh, I just wish uh, Neve and Pete uh, all the best. I yeah. will pay me a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You look very serious there, folks. Yeah. Right, Did you have a good night last night? Uh, yeah. Did you have a good night in yes, Renmore? Yes, yeah. Didn't drink too much tea now. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. That's good. That's we all right. Heard you, your home and huh? We heard about you, your home and tree. Huh? We heard about you, your home and tree. No, 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 no. That wasn't me. It was a lookalike. You're not here for this thing. No, no. That's great. That's the best one, Mark. That was the best one. That was the best one. What's up, Vera? What's up? If you're going over there to Jerry, I have Okay. Hello. Hello. We're all very quiet here. Can't stop eating. Okay, here's the dress consultant. Hello. Dorothy McGarren. Hello, Neve and Pete. I hope you have had a good day. Across the table there, for God's sake. Yeah, Jody, we've heard loads about you. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, hello. Hello to you too. <laughs> Here's the chauffeur. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Say something nice about me from Pete. Uh, uh, they're uh, lovely. Jerry, <laughs> 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 the only 
is and we're here to see what the cake actually tastes like. Oh, really? Oh, okay. She made it. <laughs> All right, okay. Very good. Oh, what do you have? Yes. All I can say is the day that's before us all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I want to say. That's all you're going to say. You're getting shy. Say something meaningful and pensive. Uh, are, you, are you drunk yet, Frank? Until the end of the night. Anyway, what? So. You're going to sober to the end of the night. So uh, hopefully the McCarthy's can put on a good enough show that I don't need any drink to enhance it. So. All right. Fair enough. Well, did you enjoy the meal? Do I can the camera? <laughs> you gonna say something there? No, I'm not. No, no, better not. Not at it. Find it, find I need my cake. Need? Your cake is really lovely. Good, good. Well, Nora, are you enjoying the day? Very much. Very much so. Alright. Pass on, Mark. We'll pass on, we'll pass on. That's right. Make sure you're really happy. <laughs>
she didn't meet anyone along the way. <laughs> now there's one thing I want to, uh, in case it took me up wrong uh, in the church, but I mentioned that she works on the roads. Uh, I want to explain that um, she um, is an engineer, a civil engineer, and uh, she specializes in bypassing towns. <laughs> she, if you look at kind of trip in this week, you will see the map where Gart is being bypassed and um, it would be a much quicker time to shell in the future when they spend another 10 million or so on 20 miles of it. Need was one of the architects and engineers there. So if you have any excuse, any complaints about that old years phone contact, this is great. It's not too bad to drive the Citroen, but we drive one of these armory cars we could not. Um, the one town she failed to bypass so far was Westport. And, uh, I hope she will continue to not be ignored. Um, to be serious for a moment, I'd like to, on behalf of the parish of Renmore, to thank Neve and her sisters and her father. And a lot of other young people here tonight too. I would mention names now they're here, but I might hurt somebody by mentioning her neighbours and others who have done so much for the community in Rimor. It's a young community that grew up with it. But they've given an awful lot of their talent and time in many ways, not just the GA, but on the boards and pantomime, etc. And we appreciate it deeply because it's not just a bit of fundraising it did. That was probably unimportant compared to the building up that they did in our community and get people together and make them friends and still going on. And long after she left uh, her childhood years, she continued with the community games as did her sisters. And I think it's not hard to say that in public. Uh, the unselfish giving of one's talents and time to other young people when they leave that stage themselves is something should be said. And before she leaves our community, I'd like to say thanks personally to you. We have a peace assessment. We have to thank you. But uh, I, could, I, should, I certainly uh, am very happy for Pete because um, there are a few times at a wedding that I could say that um, congratulations on the choice as, as well as a good day for Pete because he's married a beautiful girl. She was a lovely child, grew up to be a lovely girl and is a beautiful bride and will be a lovely wife. She has some special qualities that are not very common. And I suppose she got it from her man and dad. She was well reared. So you should thank them too. And um, I wish you every happiness and good health in your time together. And we hope that eventually you might settle down in Galway, even in more. <laughs> now I think I've gone about twice too long on, but I've met an awful lot of teachers here today, lots of Quincy, the teachers or engineers. Very highly educated crowdies. But uh, I was in the school there before Christmas, and I just finished with this in the arm. I was asking the kids what their names were. It was a very big school, nearly a thousand kids, and some of them I didn't quite know so well. And what they were going to do when they grow up. Two stock questions. But the first thing that is that I think they'd just come up from um, I don't know, Cork. There's a place called Cork down there. So my name is Dan. When I grow up, I want to be a man, and I want to go to China and Japan. And little, little girl in then from Galway says, she said, my name is Mary Brady, when I go up I want to be a lady, I get married and I have a baby. <laughs> Another little lad says, says, my name is also Dan, he says, when I go up I want to be a man. To hell with China and Japan, but if Mary Brady wants a baby, I am a man. <laughs> I'm very happy for them. There's a lot of mixed emotions today, some people, some of us have shed a tear. Some of us have laughed, we've had a wonderful time. But above all else, it's their day, and I'm delighted to be the father of Neve and giving her to Pete. I'm delighted to welcome Pete into this family at long last. <laughs> I can tell you that they've been holding hands for so long that we thought that they couldn't find their way to the jewel shop. <laughs> and there's a rumour going around here that in fact if the if the Mayo 5000 wasn't ending tomorrow that they'd wait another couple of years. <laughs>
I, I guess, you know, when, when what I call my three little angels, they were a wonderful gift in the first place from God, and in the second place, a wonderful gift, a wonderful legacy that I had left to me to cherish and to love forever. And we are sorry to see Neve going. We are going to miss her. Because Neve was very, very special. And even up to a few nights ago, she seemed to have made all the decisions. You know, we couldn't decide how many points I really to get in the morning without consulting with Neve. <laughs> and it's going to make a change. And she has tried to make us self-reliant and self-confident about ourselves. But in some ways, you know, we have always leaned on her. And particularly in the last few years, when she has quite been uh, slotted into the, into the seat of power and has been a wonderful person and a wonderful friend and I suppose the greatest daughter that any man could ever have and I know I'm speaking for the two younger ladies who wrote lovely letters to her at Christmas saying what a wonderful sister she was and that's the wonderful gift that the McCarthy's are giving to Pete and I'm very very happy about that but, and we went down to the skiff now, we have a strange custom in Galway that every reunion that takes place in the Great Southern seems to start with the skiff. Now, I wouldn't know anything about that, but it seems to be some kind of a warming up session that goes on for about two hours before the event. But anyway, things were grand. Of course, I went home and I was cross examined. Well, what was he like? Well, could you know, since I, I, I really know what's his like. Because I didn't see him, I just saw him for a second. But there was two lads, I said. And I'll ask you the question now. And I said, I don't know which was which. But the thing, one of them didn't say very much, and the other spoke a lot. No, the bitch would just say it was. But next, so peace and Eve, take this lesson to thyself, loving hearts and true. Golden years are fleeting by, youth is passing too. Learn to make the most of life, lose no happy day. Time will never return again, sweet chances thrown away. Leave no tender word unsaid, but love while life shall last. For the mill will never grind with the water that has passed. Go Tom County Galway, we were having trouble with you get an ass uh, across a kish, and he wouldn't move. And then a big American car came along, and a very fancy looking American lady stepped out, and she tipped dog down to the donkey, and took him by the tail, and she tickled him, and he took off across the bog. And the owner said, Excuse me, miss, he said, You'll have to do the same thing for me now because I have to follow you. <laughs> I'm not surprised with the parents he has, with Una and uh, Pascal. They're very good people, uh, as well as being very talented and very accomplished people. And indeed that goes for the whole family. When I was on the way today, I dropped into a house in Renmore, and I told them where I was going. And uh, they said, that would be a good wedding. I was told them to and I said, they'd be well marked, I said, by the queen. <laughs> Family. And when we heard in Westport, when uh, when Neve asked to pop the question to Peter, <laughs> he, he didn't say yes, and he didn't say no, he said yes, please. And we were with you then, we were with him the quick. Family. They're very civic spirited, they're very uh, community conscious, and uh, Una and Pascal are great people in any community. If Peter is, uh, is able to follow their footsteps, he won't go very far wrong. We're very proud of them, and we're very proud of Peter, and we're very pleased that he has made such a good choice in life. And we wish them, on behalf of the parish and all the people of Westport, 
and many, many happy years together. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, our friends, the Red Oak Prison. Yes, we do, yes. It's fortunate we like that we do. I'm not supposed to look pleasant to see that canopy draw my character. That canopy fell or drop. That canopy fell or drop. I don't know what it's a chick with me because it's not. I look forward to it on a very fair and a pleasant day in the month of June, many years ago now, as Joe McCarthy has actually pointed out, <laughs> that myself and my daughter, Cathy, we were up for a day when we were waiting to bring home Pete and his friend and uh, cool. uh, whatever it was in college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and there on the corner comes the bowl of Pete. And with them was a uh, beautiful, fair-haired young lady, wheeling a beautiful voice. <laughs> Spaniel, as your man says, a Spaniel, but the car said this was a Spaniel rally bicycle. <laughs> and I was already taken by this anyway. And Cathy said to me, you know, that's Eve now. She said, that's Peter's girlfriend. By way of giving the dad a note, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I was introduced to Eve. And you know what? She gave me a spin on the bike. From <laughs> <laughs> that moment on, myself and Eve, when they were like that, they couldn't be separated really. But on a little bit of a serious note, it's, it's my pleasant duty, you know, very pleasant duty today, on behalf of Oma, my family, and on my own behalf. To welcome Eve, uh, sort of formally, into our family. I say sort of formally because Eve really has already been well and truly accepted in our house. She's a highly talented, highly individualistic, only told me to say that. <laughs> Qualified young lady, but despite that, me was not the sort to let those kind of things go to her head. Really, she has always been most pleasant, most thoughtful, and most accommodating. Me, if you're very welcome into our home. When Peace was young, he was a bit of a dreamer. You know, and he's the morning and hour of us when we get out in the hustle and bustle, getting out in the morning. The world was, went round, where's Pete? And many and many of the morning we found him, still upstairs in the room, half dressed, totally immersed in the Beano, or the Zen, or whatever the comic was at the time, and not a bother on him. So whatever John McCarthy says, Neil, in future, if you want the chores done, don't leave any interest in magazines. <laughs> personality. He combines diplomacy, tact and thoughtfulness, I think anyway, with efficiency, dedication and thoroughness in a way a few people I know can manage. No? Thank you very much. <laughs> Those qualities combined with Eve's beauty, grace and kindness must surely augur well for the future. As Father O'Connor said, that the park is great for a phrase, as he said on a different occasion now altogether, but he said it very nicely, he says, they're young, but they're good. Boys and spot the talent, as they say. Right? <laughs> he spotted me, anyway, 
I couldn't tell you did with the first move that night or not, but he certainly didn't take long to engineer his way into her affections. And <laughs> <laughs> I got ahead of you, Peter. You met you definitely went away to set, to set your heart on the end of it. So, don't win. Don't win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The second trait, which you all definitely know about, is that Pete is a bit of a perfectionist. You know, he's always the great man to keep the bachelor pad in order. I'm sure you'd like to testify to that. <laughs> in the school years ago, Pete always had the pencil case with all the little bits and pieces inside, nice and tidy. Might be going out with a bit of a scud of a pencil on the ear, you know? When he goes to the beach, he brings the factor of 99 with him. Or he gets sunburned. Anyway. He's such a perfectionist as it has taken him eight years to get this, get this day fully organized. <laughs> And all I'd say to know, Pete, is I hope it doesn't take you as long to get the next big event on. <laughs> this agreement out the road, you see, one of these is, and then uh, Pete took off in a flurry and anyway, a little tractor to make <laughs> He was going to get home before me or whatever. Anyway. I sailed past him on my tricycle, you see? You know, comes out, paper, iPhone, <laughs> But I'll never forget the look on his face, the, the determination on his face to win, right? And when I, when I look back, and with the odds stacked against him, I reckon he, he did actually win that day. And he certainly won today. You are a winner today, Peter. <laughs> so, all I have to do now is congratulate the two of you. I extend a warm hand of welcome to you, Neil, and wish you both the best in the future. So last, but not I didn't even wear the two E. That was not to be on one I'm all right to say this now. I have been admiring the two E. You're a beautiful compliment to a beautiful bride. So with that, I'd like you all to stand up, please, raise your glasses, and a toast. <laughs> Time now for the biggest speech of the day. That's no offense to anybody else, of course. The biggest speech of the day, Peter. Reverend Tatters, on my hand, on behalf of my wife and I. We both want to thank you all very much for coming. Right? A lot of you have to travel long distances to get here. Right? But both of us just want to say that we really do appreciate it because it makes the day a special one as it has been already. It makes it a good day to all our friends and our relatives around. Well, um, over the last few months, I've become a master of the art of delegation. Uh, and in fact, my role uh, in this whole proceeding was much more consultative one. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm told, by the way, means I did nothing at all. <laughs> but um, as a result of this, both Neve and myself are very grateful to a, a number of people. And we'd like to take the opportunity now to thank some of them. Um, I'm going to start off by thanking Fergal Dunley, first of all, uh, for the lovely ceremony today. And whenever the, we the, the knees were a bit weak, which they were, believe me, <laughs> uh, he kept us going with his neo banter. Neo Joe, by the way, just lunch my book. I have to say that I really was as proud as punch today of my two sisters, Kathy and Breach. You know? In my estimation, they did an absolutely brilliant job right? the music for the mass. And of course, we had one other honour guest who played the Ellen Pipes, and that's John Subaru here. Yay! Of course, uh, behind every good musician, you have to have a musical director. <laughs> and in this case, that was my mother, Una. Yeah. Who, unlike myself, was not a consultant. She played a very much uh, an active role as chief advisor uh, to the two girls. And she also did Trojan work in putting together the mass booklet. So, ma'am, thanks a million for Miss Eileen.
On a personal note, I just want to really, and also for Cathy Breeden and John, over the last uh, 29 this years. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only born 29 years. <laughs> She, she's, she's losing all memory, you know. But um, in, in fairness, they really have invested an awful lot of time, patience, and kindness. And a few bottles, I don't mind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, no man, I don't believe any man could have asked for a better start. Um, I'm sure, mind you, when they're wondering when the recession will end and when they'll get a bit of payback. <laughs> But hopefully in the future we might send you another world cruise or something. <laughs> no. when, when they make the first million. I suppose it's fair to say that uh, I'll never be known as a man who makes a flighty decision. <laughs> so, and that's one of the reasons that I've been hanging around the McCarthy House household for the last uh, seven years in the dish. <laughs> Near the age, uh, I'm sure they must have privately wondered if this Mayo lad was ever going to do the business or was he ever going to get off the proverbial pot uh, for the next 10 years. <laughs> but uh, I have to say that in all that time, I was always made the most welcome person. And in fact, I was treated like a king. So Joe particularly, I just want to thank you for that. And I was also a very fortunate man to have known uh, Lee's mum, Eileen. And really, I'm just going to say a very simple thing here. That to me, she was a true lady. I think that says it all. And particularly over the last few years and few days, as far as I'm concerned, all of those same traits have shone through <coughs> in uh, Neve Ashton anymore. I was thinking about um, what I'd say about me, and I'll tell you the truth, uh, I spent uh, many of the speakers hours trying to say, what am I going to say? <laughs> but uh, I thought back over the last seven years, and in that length of time, you know, you get a fair bit of grief, you know, even though in fairness to me, she's great that way, but I have got a little bit of grief. <laughs> Particularly because uh, she's always said to me, you know, you never wrote me anything romantic. You never wrote me a poem or anything like that. So, uh, and she said, my own dad was great for me. His time is the way all the know. And uh, in fact, my own father wasn't uh, a stranger to it either, really. I want to hear that piece, you know. I decided anyway, if I don't do it tonight, I never do it. I mean, uh, I don't. <laughs> I put a uh, strange old bean and I put together a little bit of the ditty. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to call it a poem, I wouldn't say. So I'm going to call it an old to me. Right. Stands off like this now. That's it. <laughs> as the clock marched around, I marveled at what I found. And I said to myself, she won't wait on the shelf. My friends, they did clamour with a very loud din. Come on, young queen, never mind where you've been. Shake off that mantle of bachelor sin. <laughs> <laughs> so today we got married, and thank God for that. For now I'm looked after in our new little flesh. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note, she's really adored. She's patient and kind, and my very best find. She's beautiful and smart, gentle as a dove and the only woman I ever could love. Oh. Oh. So the end of the story is easy to see, because I'm probably as happy as I ever will be. That's it. That's, that's it. I just wanted to say a very special thanks to two men here on my right, Morris and Sean, because over the last few days particularly they've been running around 
and they took care of last night as well, actually, just, just one fine thing. <laughs> but um, they carried out their duty today like a well-oiled machine. And uh, wouldn't even look, if not well-oiled now, it's a well-oiled later on. <laughs> Um, with that now, I'm going to hand you over to Leave. Yeah. I just like to start off by saying C is at E C H O S L O B A K I N. Oh, <laughs> an awful lot like my voice will probably stop breaking but I'd like to thank just one or two people. I'd like to thank Jerry and Trina for the cake. I'd like to thank my Aunt Kathleen and Uncle Steve who spent all last week running around London looking for a veil and a hairdress for me. I'd like to thank Annette Nugent and Anne Nugent because all through the last nine months they were there to give me all the support and advice I needed. And most particularly today, I'd like to thank a young lady who last February when I got engaged told me that weddings were not for her and she wasn't interested in them. And then in September she approached me and she told me that she was going to look after the flowers, she was going to look after the nameplates, she was going to look after the... she was going to look after... Um, sorry, the front of the booklet and she said she'd play the yellow pipes for me. And that, that girl was a great support to me for, through the last three months particularly. And I'd like to say a very big thank you to Joan. <laughs> director throughout this whole event. And I would say that um, not only is she an engineer and a great one, but she's also a great artist. And uh, her, hopefully she'll have an exhibition this year, so I'd like you all to come out and buy it. I'm of her, that's the plug I said earlier. <laughs> the other plug I said I'd give her was that she's remarkably single. <laughs> I'd like to just say um, the Quinn family. Um, it was I think I was going out with Pete a good year and a half before I was introduced to the Quinn clan, before I was brought down to Corrigan. And on that day, Kathy got out the old photographs of Pete and showed me him with his inverted haircut. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was to turn me off or, or not. Both Aunt Pascal and Kathy, Regan and Sean, have always given me a very warm welcome down to Corrigan. The only thing I'll say is, Joel, hurry up, it's a very warm welcome down there. <laughs> 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 my old father and my two sisters, um, I can't say anything about them, it's something I love them very much. And finally, this man here. <laughs> I think I'd get too emotional if I told you how much I loved him and adored him and how marvellous I think he is. But I'd just like to say that he charmed and talked to me into going out with him eight years ago, and I know he'll continue to charm and talk me for the next many years. Drop it there quick, well, let's go.
You may see a stranger You may see a stranger Across a crowded room And somehow you know You know even then That somehow you'll see her Again and again